Well, Drillux has been running autonomously within Orica for years, and it's got an enterprise value of about $1.3 billion. The company will keep its current boss, Patrick Houlihan, who's a 21-year veteran of Dulux, and among other claims to fame, as a young chemist, he got his name on the patent for the company's market-leading wash-and-wear paint. I spoke to Patrick Houlihan as he was preparing for tomorrow's listing. Patrick Houlihan, just looking at the business you now inherit or run on your own as a separate company, um, the striking things are, firstly, that you know, you've got 50% paint market share in Australia pretty well, and Dulux is just uh, a sort of an island in Australia of Dulux around the world, owned by Axo Nobel. So it, it looks, it feels a bit like you've got nowhere to go, really. And that's presumably why everyone's talking about the possibility of Dulux just being taken over straight away by Axo Nobel. I mean, is that a, is that a reasonable uh, characterisation of what you've got? Um, look, it's uh, a key characteristic of any successful decorative paints business in the world is the fact that they're very strong regionally. Um, it's not a business that's attuned to a global business model. Whilst there are some global players and they would get some minor scale in, for example, some of their purchasing um, aspects of their business, presumably, it's a business that's really um, built and drives its profitability and, and its success around its attachment to the end consumer which comes through the relationship to regional brands and then having the knowledge to focus on your key customers, um, be those the resellers you go through or the trade painters. So um, whilst Dulux is owned by someone else outside of the Pacific, um, um, it is a totally independent situation and the fact we do have a strong regional business um, that we're growing whilst also seeding opportunities for growth in Asia is, is really how we look at our business now strategy. But do, do you accept that it's going to be difficult for you to grow market share in Australia from here? Well, we say across our businesses that we have approximately 40% market share. We not 50. certainly, um, well, we've said 40, yeah, we have not, uh, not stated 50. I know that's been speculated in some parts. But across all of Dulux Group, we've got 40% share on average. Um, we certainly don't see that as terminal across the last five years in our decorative paints business in Australia, we've grown seven points of share. So we've had some fantastic growth in what is a relatively mature market, and we believe we've got the right fundamentals to continue strategically pushing on in that regard. And some pretty, pretty big companies are up against you, global companies, mm -hmm. that have recently bought Wattle, uh, and also Taubman's is owned by PPG. Yes. So it's not as if you're, you know, you're fighting sort of uh, small backyard operations. Um, when you think about um, the fact that some international paint companies have come to Australia and left, such as Asian Paints, um, Benjamin Moore from the US has come and gone. Uh, the fact that PPG, who are the global number two, took over Torbman's three years ago, and Nippon Paints, who are the Asian number one, came in on an exclusive basis to Bunnings two years ago. Um, the fact all of that was going on and we've continued to grow share significantly really reassures us that our business model is well attuned um, and really does reinforce that earlier point I made about decorative paints business has been very strong regionally. Now you said that you're not licensing the name Dulux from anybody, you actually own it yes. in your region. But what is your region? I mean, where, where can you take it to without sort of encroaching into Axo Noble's backyard? Yeah. Um, we own the Dulux brand and the Cabot's brand also is another one in this regard in Australia, New Zealand, Papua New Guinea and Fiji. So when I talk about the Pacific, those are the specific countries. Um, it's also worth making the point, um, Alan, that um, whilst we've called our company Dulux Group after our main brand, Dulux, as the group, we also have Sally's, Yates um, and the Cabot's brand uh, I just mentioned as well. So, but if you want to expand your business into Asia, for example, or China, I don't yes. know if you do or not, but... Yeah. Um, do you have to do it with another brand than Dulux because Axo Noble's got that brand in those countries? Um, we would and uh, we are underway in that regard. I, I think the important thing is when you go into another geography with a brand, if that brand has never been there before, the day, day one it gets there, it means nothing. It's not a brand. So certainly it gets down to what is your strategy for international expansion and ours is not to be a mainstream player but to establish strong sustainable niche positions in premium segments. So we've played in Asia for 20 years. Uh, initially that was part of the ICI group, but our Sally's business has leading um, product specific positions in a number of countries, for example in Hong Kong, uh, Liquid Nails is number one. And to build on the concept that we can lift our product range and our capability into Asia, we acquired um, a business in Shanghai in late 2008 called Sopel which is one of the leading wood care businesses in Shanghai. So we're using that base now 
to really build our Sally's position, our wood care position, and to establish some niche premium paint offerings in that regard as well. And within Australia, as you say, you're not just paint, you've got Yates and Sally's, which are in different parts of the hardware store. I mean, is, is another area of growth for you to add more products um, that are within, within your distribution system? Um, we certainly always look at that. Um, we've, we acquired Yates in 2003 on the premise of category expansion, very common customer base. Um, at the end of the day, uh, in terms of the end consumer, the homeowner, we talk about our business being about helping the homeowner imagine and create a better place. So whether it's a better deck, um, a better house through the decoration or a better garden. Um, that all comes together. But our strategy really is focused domestically around staying very close to the core product ranges we've got now. I'm um, not envisaging us doing dramatic step outs domestically, but rather bulking up the positions we've got organically. And, no and through it. Well, we will look at acquisitions absolutely where they're strategically about bulking up the market leading positions and obviously they give us good cost synergy to get the right financial returns. And what about your balance sheet? I think you've got about 250 million in debt to yes. begin with. Yes. Do you think you could um, add to your debt? Well, uh, absolutely. We think uh, we're well positioned in terms of if you look at, for example, our net debt to um, earnings ratio, which is quite a good ratio to look at for our type of business, given our brands aren't on, on balance sheet, or at least our primary brands. Um, and so in that regard, we do have flexibility to move, and we'll obviously consider that wisely and strategically. Um, but we do think the type of debt levels we've got to earnings now are, are a good baseline for our business. Thanks for joining us, Patrick Hillhan. Thank you, Alan.